Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, The Adventure of the Sussex Vampire. Meet the characters. Hello, English learners. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a detective from London. We have a puzzle to solve. Will you help me? Remember, every detail matters. Hello, I'm Dr. John Watson. I'm not just Sherlock Holmes' close friend, but I'm also the one writing and sharing our adventures with you. Greetings, I'm Bob Ferguson. I deeply care for my family and want to ensure everyone's well-being. Hello there, I'm Mrs. Ferguson. I love my children dearly, and sometimes it's difficult to convey my true feelings. Hi, I'm Jackie. I live with my dad and stepmom. Life has been different since my little half-brother came. Hello, I'm Dolores. I am close to the Ferguson family and have spent much time with them. It's time to start our story. Chapter 1 In 1901, I was a busy doctor. I hadn't seen my friend, Sherlock Holmes, for a long time. So, one day in November, I went to visit him at 221 B. Baker Street. Mrs. Hudson, the housekeeper, welcomed me with a smile. I guess she was happy to see me. I went up to the living room. Not much had changed. Soon, I was relaxing with a newspaper and coffee. Holmes was reading a letter. Then he showed it to me. This letter talks about vampires. What do you think? The letter was from a company, telling Holmes about Mr. Robert Ferguson. Mr. Ferguson had questions about vampires. The company couldn't help, so they told him to see Holmes. I was curious but didn't ask more. Holmes liked to focus. Do we know about vampires? Let's see what the big book says about V. I gave him a big book from the shelf. Holmes looked through it. Here it is, he said. Vampirism in Hungary and Vampires in Transylvania. But after reading a bit, he looked unhappy. This isn't useful. Talking about dead people walking? That's silly. I tried to help. Some say older people drink young people's blood to stay young, I said. Holmes nodded. The book says that. But we work with facts, not ghost stories. I don't think we can help Mr. Ferguson. Holmes looked at another letter on the table and started reading it. At first, he smiled, but then he looked very focused. After reading, he seemed deep in thought. Finally, he asked me, Do you know where Lamberley in Sussex is? It's south of Horsham, I replied. That area has many old houses named after people who built them long ago. Like Oddleys and Harveys. Holmes seemed a bit cold when he said, Exactly. I felt he was maybe a bit surprised by my knowledge. He often explained things to me, and perhaps he forgot sometimes that I knew things too. But I wasn't looking for praise. Are you enjoying this story? Let us know by tapping the like button. Thank you. He said, We'll learn more about a place called Cheeseman's in Lamberley soon. This letter is from Robert Ferguson, and he says he knows you. Knows me? I was surprised. Holmes gave me the letter to read. Dear Mr. Holmes, my lawyers told me about you. I need help with a very sensitive issue. It's about my friend. He married a lady from Peru five years ago. She's lovely but very different. He started feeling distant from her, even though she loved him a lot. Now, there's a strange problem. I'll tell you more when we meet. Just a brief idea now. The lady started behaving oddly. My friend was married before and has a 15-year-old son. The lady hit this boy without reason once. That was shocking, but what she did to her own baby was worse. One day, the nurse heard the baby cry and ran to the room. She found the lady, looking like she was biting the baby's neck. The baby had a small bleeding wound. Chapter 2 
From my time with Holmes, I've seen many odd things. But this letter was truly shocking. Holmes looked calm, but I couldn't tell what he felt. The letter said, The nurse was scared after seeing the lady with the baby. She felt something was wrong. She watched the lady closely, always guarding the baby. The lady seemed to always be waiting, watching, like a wolf ready to catch its prey. One day, the nurse had enough. She told the husband everything. He didn't believe her, thinking she was just imagining things. But then they heard a baby cry. They ran to the baby's room and saw the wife with blood on her mouth and the baby bleeding from the neck. Now the wife is locked in her room. They are both scared and confused, thinking maybe she is a vampire. The letter ended asking for Holmes' help. At the end, there was a note. I think Dr. Watson used to play rugby. I remember him. I remembered him too. Ah. Dig Bob Ferguson from Richmond. Always a good guy. I told Holmes. Holmes looked at me and said, Rugby? I keep discovering new things about you. Watson, can you send a telegram? I got ready to write. We'll look into your problem, Mr. Ferguson Holmes said. I raised an eyebrow. His problem, not his friend. Holmes replied, We shouldn't show doubt. Let's send it and wait until tomorrow. As I went to send the telegram, I kept thinking about the strange story. I didn't believe in magical ghosts, but this was puzzling. I hoped tomorrow would give us some answers. At ten in the morning, Mr. Ferguson came into our room. I still remember him as a tall and swift man, a real star on the rugby field. But the man in front of me looked quite different. He seemed older and deeply troubled. Seeing him, I wondered if age had changed me too. Hello, Watson. He greeted with warmth, even though his voice showed weariness. Don't miss a single chapter of our extraordinary stories. Hit the subscribe button now. It feels like ages since our rugby matches. A lot has changed, hasn't it? The past days have been particularly hard for me. Mr. Holmes, your message made it clear you understand the depth of my situation. Holmes responded, Speaking directly often saves time and misunderstandings. Please, Mr. Ferguson, tell us everything. Especially about your wife's actions and how it affects the children. Taking a deep breath, Ferguson replied, My wife, she has a heart full of love for me. I never doubted it. But discovering this secret has shaken her. After our confrontation, she locked herself in her room. She refuses to see me. Only her old maid Dolores is allowed. Holmes, with concern evident in his voice, asked, How about the children's safety? Ferguson's face showed his worry. Mrs. Mason, the baby's nurse, is with him every moment. I trust her. But it's Jack, my oldest son who concerns me. Despite his kind nature and the challenges he faces with his disability, my wife has acted harshly with him. Holmes, glancing at a letter on the table, questioned, Who else is in your household? Ferguson listed a few house staff, Michael, a man who helps around, then there's me, my wife, Jack, the baby, Dolores, and Mrs. Mason. Holmes, eyebrow raised, said, you married your wife after only knowing her a short while? Yes, just a few weeks, Ferguson admitted. And Dolores has served her for many years. Ferguson nodded. Yes, she has. Holmes seemed deep in thought, then decided. I think the best way forward is for us to visit Lamberley and see things for ourselves. Don't worry, we'll stay at a nearby inn. Ferguson's face lightened a bit. That's a relief. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. There's a convenient train at two o'clock. Will that work? Holmes replied, Perfectly. Our schedule is open, and this case now has our full attention. Naturally, Watson will accompany us. Chapter 3 
Holmes was deeply into the case, while I was slightly annoyed. I often had to leave my own work to assist him. But our office was quiet, so it wasn't a big problem. Holmes was too focused on Ferguson to notice my feelings. Holmes asked Ferguson, About your wife. She's been harsh to both children, correct? Ferguson nodded. Yes. Your son got the worst of it? She hit him twice. Once with a stick, once with her hands. Did she say why? She said she disliked him a lot. Is she often jealous? Very much so. She loves deeply, which leads to strong jealousy. Holmes wondered. But your son, even with his physical challenges, he's clever, right? Did he explain her behavior? Ferguson shook his head. He said there was no reason. They've never been close. Yet he's a loving boy to you? Absolutely. He's very attached to me. Holmes seemed lost in thought for a moment before asking, Your son was very close to his mother? He cherished her memory. Holmes noted down some points and then continued, Did these attacks on the baby and your son happen at the same time? The first time, yes. She was very angry at both. The second time, only Jack was harmed. Mrs. Mason said the baby was fine. That makes things more complicated. Ferguson huzzled said, I don't quite get it. Holmes smiled slightly. Sometimes I have theories and wait for evidence to prove or disprove them. Your case is challenging, but not impossible. We'll be at Victoria Station at two. On a cold grey day in November, Holmes and I found ourselves aboard the two o'clock train headed for Lamberley. We chatted lightly about various things, mostly to pass the time. Once we arrived, we briefly stopped at an inn called the Checkers to keep our bags. The inn had a cosy feeling about it, but we had little time to explore. We then set out towards Ferguson's home, which sat isolated in the countryside. The path was long and winding, surrounded by trees, their branches almost bare from the autumn chill. As the house came into view, I was struck by its sheer size and age. Part of it seemed very ancient, with its tall Tudor chimneys rising proudly against the sky, while some areas appeared to be additions made more recently. The roof, tinted green with age, showed many years of weathering. In the main room, there was a big fireplace with a warm fire. I looked around, noticing old walls mixed with modern art and items from South America. Probably, these were from Ferguson or his wife's travels. Holmes, Heather the detective, was immediately drawn to these. His fingers brushed over each item, his eyes sharp, scanning for details. But soon his attention shifted to a corner where a dog, looking weak, lay in a basket. The dog moved with difficulty and came to Ferguson. Holmes asked Ferguson, What happened to the dog? With a hint of sadness, Ferguson replied, The vet couldn't say for sure. Thought it might be a spinal problem. Thankfully, he's slowly recovering. Holmes, eyebrows furrowed, pressed further. When did this start? Roughly four months ago, answered Ferguson. Holmes looked deep in thought. Curious, he murmured. Ferguson's patience seemed to wear thin. Holmes, this isn't just a game. My family's safety is at stake. What are you thinking? Holmes looked into Ferguson's eyes, trying to reassure him. I understand, Mr. Ferguson. I promise to do all I can to help. Please, check on your wife. We'll be here. As Ferguson left, Holmes returned to his investigation, leaving me pondering the mystery that surrounded us. Chapter 4 Mr. Ferguson returned to the room, his face showing clear signs of worry and sadness. With him was a tall girl with a slim build named Dolores. Dolores, Mr. Ferguson began, Please get the tea ready and ensure she has everything she might need. Dolores looked at Mr. Ferguson with concern in her eyes. She's not well, sir. 
She hasn't eaten anything. I think she really needs a doctor. Honestly, I'm quite scared to be alone with her in that condition. Mr. Ferguson, looking a bit unsure, turned to me, hoping for some guidance. I offered a kind smile. I'd be happy to help if I can. Would she be willing to see me? Dolores, without hesitation, said, Yes, doctor, please come. She truly needs medical attention. With that, I followed Dolores. We climbed up the old, creaking stairs and walked down a long, dimly lit corridor. The hallway ended with a sturdy-looking door, and I thought about how Mr. Ferguson might find it challenging if he ever had to rush to his wife's side. Opening the door with her key, Dolores led me inside. The room had a certain stillness to it, with the only movement coming from a lady lying on the bed. She appeared troubled, her eyes scanning me with a mixture of hope and worry. I'm here to help. I'm the doctor, I softly said, hoping to ease her anxiety. Although her symptoms seemed more emotional than physical, Dolores whispered to me, sharing her concern. She's been like this for days now. The lady interrupted, her voice weak but filled with emotion. Where is my husband? She questioned. He's just downstairs, I responded gently. Her reply was swift and firm. I don't wish to see him now. Her face was a canvas of various emotions, from sadness to frustration. I tried to bridge the gap between them. Your husband is really worried about you, I told her. She looked at me, tears forming in her eyes. I love him so much, but he doesn't understand or trust me. I can't face him now, but there's one thing you must tell him for me. I want to see our child. It's my only wish. After that, she seemed exhausted and refused to engage in more conversation. Heading back downstairs, I found Mr. Ferguson and Holmes waiting eagerly. I recounted everything I had witnessed and heard. Mr. Ferguson's reaction was one of deep pain and confusion. He said, How can I let her see our child? After everything, how can I be sure she won't harm him? The child's safety is my priority, and he's in a safe place now. He needs to stay there. Chapter 5 A neat maid brought us tea. While she did, a young boy came into the room. He was quite special looking with dark hair and a pale face. His light green eyes shone with happiness when he saw his dad. It looked like he hadn't seen his father in a very long time. He gave him a big hug. Daddy. He shouted. I didn't know you were coming home now. I would have been here for you. I'm so happy to see you. Mr. Ferguson looked a bit unsure, but hugged him back. Hey there. He said gently touching the boy's hair. I came home early because my friends, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson are visiting. Is that the detective, Mr. Holmes? The boy asked. Yes. Holmes then asked. And your other child, Mr. Ferguson? Can we see the baby? Mr. Ferguson told the boy, named Jackie, to bring the baby. Jackie walked in a way that made me think he had some back problem. Soon, he came back with a tall woman who had a baby. The baby had lovely golden hair and big dark eyes. Mr. Ferguson seemed to really love the baby. He held him close and looked at him fondly. Who would want to hurt this little one? He whispered. That's when I saw Holmes looking very serious at something outside. I tried to see what it was, but the shutter was closed. Soon. He looked back at the baby and saw a small mark on its neck. He checked it, and then told the nurse he wanted to talk. I overheard him say, Your worries will be over soon. The nurse seemed grateful. What's the nurse like? Holmes asked. Mr. Ferguson looked confused but answered, She looks strict, but she's really kind. She loves the baby. Do you like her? Holmes asked the boy. 
Jackie looked upset and said no. Mr. Ferguson hugged him and said, Jackie has strong feelings, but he likes me. He told Jackie to leave and looked after him lovingly. Mr. Ferguson then turned to Holmes. I feel bad for bringing you here, Mr. Holmes. How can you help? Holmes smiled. I think I understand everything. I figured it out even before coming here. Everything else was just to be sure. Mr. Ferguson looked very worried. Please tell me what's going on. I felt for Mr. Ferguson. Sometimes Holmes liked to make things sound more mysterious. I wished he'd just tell him. Holmes seemed to get it. I'll explain everything. But we need to see the lady. Is she okay to meet us? He asked me. She's sick but she's okay to talk. Let's go see her. She won't want to see me. Mr. Ferguson said sadly. She will, said Holmes. He wrote a note and gave it to me to give to her. Chapter 6 I walked to the upstairs door and knocked lightly, waiting for an answer. Dolores soon opened the door, looking a bit worried. Handing her a piece of paper, a note from Holmes, I noticed her skimming through it, after which a gasp of joy echoed through the room. Suddenly, she looked happy and surprised. She's ready to talk, she whispered. Holmes and Ferguson joined me, and we all entered the room. Ferguson tried to go to his wife who was sitting on the bed, but she asked him to stay back. He looked sad and sat down in a chair nearby. Holmes, ever the gentleman, gave a polite nod to the lady before settling himself. Addressing Dolores, he suggested, Perhaps it would be best if you stepped outside. But catching a glance of the lady's concern, he quickly added, Of course, if the madam wishes for you to stay, I have no objections. He then looked at Ferguson and said, I'll get straight to the point. Your wife is kind and good. She has been in a tough spot. Ferguson's eyes brightened. If you can show she's not at fault, Mr. Holmes, I'd be very thankful. Holmes replied, I'll tell you everything, but some parts might be hard to hear. Ferguson nodded. I just want to know she's okay. Holmes started. Back home, when I heard about a vampire, it sounded silly to me. But you said you saw your wife near the child with something that looked like blood. Could there be another reason? Ferguson, looking surprised, said, I did see it. Holmes asked, what if she was trying to get rid of something bad, like poison, and not drinking blood? Ferguson looked shocked. Poison. With a hint of triumph, Holmes explained. This house, Mr. Ferguson, contains artifacts from distant lands. I noticed an arrow box, conspicuously empty. Imagine if a child were accidentally hurt by a poisoned arrow, they would require immediate aid. Ferguson looked scared and sad. Holmes added, Your wife saw the danger and helped the child. She didn't tell you because she knew it would make you very sad. Ferguson whispered, You mean my son Jackie did this? Holmes looked seriously at Mr. Ferguson. Consider the incident with the dog. I've gathered that Jackie was fond of it, yet the dog was injured. Why? Someone wanted to test something. Holmes paused for emphasis. You have decorative arrows on your wall. These aren't ordinary arrows. They are tipped with a dangerous poison. Perhaps Jackie, curious and unaware, took an arrow, accidentally hurt the dog and realized its effect. After seeing it work on the dog, he might have tried it on the baby. Mrs. Ferguson saw this and tried to help. She wanted to save the baby, but people thought she did something bad. When we first came in, I watched Jackie. Near a window, his face showed up like in a mirror because of the shutters. I could see strong bad feelings on his face when he looked at his stepbrother. This made me think about why your wife acted strangely. I guess she might be trying to help the baby, maybe because Jackie did something harmful. Ferguson shook his head. I can't believe it. Holmes looked at the lady. Did I get it right? She cried softly, 
I didn't want to upset my husband. When Mr. Holmes said he knew everything, I felt better. Holmes then mused. Perhaps a short period of separation, a stint at sea, might benefit young Jackie. But I'm still wondering, how could you leave the child alone? Mrs. Mason knows everything. She has been watching. Holmes smiled. That makes sense. Everyone in the room looked very emotional. Ferguson went to his wife, trying to comfort her. Holmes whispered to me, It's time for us to leave, Watson. As we were leaving, a note fell from my pocket. I picked it up and read, Dear lady, don't worry, I know everything. Better days are coming. Kindly. Sherlock Holmes. We quietly left the room, letting the door close behind us. The end. Have you enjoyed this story? Like and subscribe to our channel now to unlock fresh tales and level up your English skills.